So moving straight into round three, on the left we have Nick, who's going to be playing a Lugia V-Star deck, and on the right we have Alyssa playing a Raging Bolt Ogre Pond deck. Without further ado, let's go ahead and dig in. So we see Nick is starting that Lugia V, and not to be outdone, Alyssa is starting the Raging Bolt. So both players starting pretty good starters. Uh, capturing a Roma with a Tails means that Nick can get another basic out. That may or may not be what he wanted to see. A lot of times you want to get those early uh, heads to get some Archaeops in your hand to discard. You just see Nick going, looking like he's going to grab another Lugia V. Double checking his prizes here. I certainly don't know any of his counts. Oh, and he decides instead just to fail the Capturing Aroma. Wait, no, he does grab the Lugia V. Technically, Alyssa would be in the right here if she called a judge and didn't allow that Lugia to be benched because Nick did start shuffling before, like without pulling it out. Uh, but generally speaking, players at our local events aren't going to be that hardcore, at least not in League Challenges. Everybody's here to have a good time and not to win just on weird technicalities. See Nick now playing that Ultra Ball, discarding a Collapse Stadium and a Jet Energy. And uh, we see him perhaps getting Luminion, yep, for Carmine. It's always a question for me, if you want the start, you know, the Carmine with Lugia uh, badly enough to do this versus, you know, he could just get an Archaeops there and then um, he had Professor's Research in hand so he could get rid of it that way next turn. Um, and that way he'd be sure to have one of the discard. He wouldn't be, you know, losing out on one of his energy cards. But, oh, that was not a research. That was a boss's orders. Okay, with it being a boss's orders, that makes more sense. So I, I definitely can see why he wanted to go with Carmine there. Uh, but he did not draw into any Archaeops. So that's a little bit of a sad story. We see Alyssa has two Ogre Ponds already in hand. She's able to use an Earthen Vessel to discard a Lightning Energy and get two uh, Grass Energies ready to Teal Dance onto her Ogre Ponds. Uh, I'm going to draw a couple cards that way. She may or may not have a fighting energy in hand, but uh, she probably has ways to potentially get there if she doesn't. We see one Teal Dance, and then a second Teal Dance, and we get another Raging Bolt to boot, and we get Trekking Shoes to dig a little further. Now this is deciding, and she decides not to take the Earthen Vessel. That surprises me a little bit, but um, I can see wanting to get a little bit more set up rather than just pushing for it. And I don't think she has a Sada's Vitality in her hand, so... Uh, that makes it a little bit less of a stretch to want to get some more Pokemon out first. Trekking Shoes again, getting another Trekking Shoes, which she'll then play to get a Pokegear, uh, which she'll play then to try to find a Sada's Vitality. She does find that Sada's Vitality, and uh, so now she's off to the races. She'll be able to attach the Lightning Energy in the discard to the active and potentially get off an attack for Knockout this turn if she can just find one more card to get her a fighting energy and the sonnet draws three but none of them are fighting energy uh, we collect cards and oh two fighting energies off of that collect cards means that we will be seeing a knockout here uh, we see teal mask ogre pond go down as well to uh, get another teal dance in so that three grass energies will be discarded along with one energy off of the raging bolt looks like Alyssa's choosing to discard the fighting energy she has one of each in hand a fighting and a lightning so she'll be able to do sort of whatever whichever she wanted uh, but she also has a, a sada for next turn in hand as well uh, so this is going to be a pretty strong back-to-back uh, -back turn here we do see nick evolve up into the lugia v star he has one archaeops in hand that he can discard perhaps with that earthen vessel uh, but i don't know that one archaeops is really enough uh, that is going to be where we start at least and we see the first Archaeops go down, Earthen Vessel coming through and potentially pulling out Lightning Energies, but no, Nick decides just to keep them in deck. And he knows that he's not going to be doing anything with Iron Hands right now. Uh, there is an argument that he could actually pull out those Lightning Energies uh, just under the thought that he's not really going to get to use them at all this game, uh, just to clear his, clear his head, thin, uh, clear, his blah, 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 clear his hand or thin his deck. Ooh, words are hard. Okay, so um, we see Luminion now come down, the second Luminion V, and it looks like looks like Nick is currently eyeing down that Professor's Research. That is the card he'll grab off of that second Luminion. Um, but this may already be a too little too late scenario. Even if this discard works out, he gets another Archaeops with a way to discard it. And gets both of them online to start attacking with Lugia. Um, Lugia can't take a knockout on Raging Bolt, but Raging Bolt can take a knockout on Lugia V-Star. 
So, um, okay, imagine we're going to see a capturing aroma with Nick here looking to get a heads. And sure enough, he flips a four for heads. He casually says, no, I don't want your heads and tails dice. But he does pull out an Archeops here, placing it, interestingly enough, on top of Eliminion. I'm sure that's just a temporary placement. And what we'll next probably see is for that Archeops to be discarded with an Ultra Ball. And then Nick will choose what other card from his hand to discard. Uh, I think the least useful one might be the Drapion V, um, but Iron Hands is, you know, not too too far up the, the chain there. Uh, with this Ultra Ball, Nick looks like he's thinking about getting the Blood Moon Ursa Luna. That's not a bad pick. It can one-hit KO the Raging Volts, um, so it might even be useful to power it up now. Um, if only he had a Jet Energy to be able to jump the Ursa Luna into the active, because as is, he won't be able to power it up and give Lugia the energy needed to retreat. He would be able to, and then he could attach an energy to Lugia and attach a double turbo to Blood Moon along with uh, one other energy card, but that would only hit the Raging Bolt here for 220 damage, which is not enough for a knockout. So, Alyssa there fixing the V-Star marker because Nick did use his V-Star. Now Nick is deciding what to grab with these with these uh, Primal Turbo usages. And it looks like he's thinking about attaching a Legacy Energy. Oh, Legacy Energy and Double Turbo onto Luminion, and then just another single Mist Energy onto Lugia so that it can retreat. See the retreat. And what we'll see now is Luminion attacking for what would be 120, but ends up being 100 damage because of the double turbo energy, and then getting shuffled back into the deck. That's fine, but Nick still has to put back up a two prizer that Alyssa is likely to be able to knock out with her Raging Bolt this turn. So we see energy retrieval, probably grabbing two grass energies to bring back onto Teal Mask Ogre Ponds, uh, drawing a couple more cards, and also making it so that she doesn't have to discard energy off of the Raging Bolts if she doesn't want to. So my guess is we'll see Asada's Vitality. If I remember right, we already saw it in Alyssa's hand to probably attach as yes, a Fighting to the Active and a Lightning to the Bench. Uh, drawing three cards, and those included yet another Asada's Vitality for next turn if needed. Uh, manual Attachment onto the Bench. And I imagine what we'll see now is that... Uh, Bellowing Thunder attack for 280 damage, discarding all of the grass energies and one of the energies off of the active. No, she chooses to go... Okay, there we go. Um, discarding six energies would be doing an incredible amount of damage there. Six, six energies, that's well over 280. That's 400 and... That's 400 damage if I, if I count right. Seven times six? No, not, not four. 420, actually. No. 360. It would have been... No, 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 no. Yeah, it would have been 420. But she, Alyssa did fix part of it. She attached one of the energies back to the bench. I think she still discarded five energies, which is 350 damage. It's probably a moot point, because I think any energies left on the active were bound for discard... We see Nick getting another heads on his capturing aroma, and this time he really wanted a tail so that he could get Luminion and potentially boss up the Raging Bolt that's on the bench there. No evolved Pokemon help him out, so he is just going to go ahead and uh, grab an Archaeops to thin his deck. We see a Legacy Energy. Is he going for a Luminion play again? I don't. I don't think that's the right idea. does attach the legacy energy to Luminion, and then he attached a jet energy to the Blood Moon Ursa Luna. We have to play the boss's orders. Okay, so he is going to take the knockout on the benched Raging Bolt, taking care of all of Alyssa's energies, uh, taking knocking out all. So she does have to reattach two energies to the active for it to be able to attack, and she'll have to get two other energies to get this knockout. 
you know, we see a fighting energy get attached with Professor Sada's vitality. And I think Alyssa may just know that she has it already, um, but she could have benched, she has another Raging Bolt in her hand, so she could have benched it to get more energy in play uh, from that Professor Sada. You see, however, she has energy retrievals in hand. She'll get more grass energies in play this way, and um, a quick and easy knockout on the Ursa Luna. And if they're pretending for just a moment that he had actually attached the legacy energy to the Ursa Luna, so he'd have still uh, only given up one prize that turn and thus having the game not yet be over. However, we know that that didn't happen. They know as well. Um, Melissa did take all of, all six of her prize cards, and she will be going on to the final round uh, with a 3-0 record. Um, in fact, Alyssa was, if I recall correctly, the only undefeated player at this point of the tournament. So um, good for her, and we'll be moving into round four very soon.